In this section, we're going to talk about factoring polynomials using the GCF. Remember, GCF stands for Greatest Common Factor. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to take polynomials, which are going to have uh, more than one term, and we're going to factor out whatever factor is common to both, or to all three. Writing a polynomial as a product of factors is called factoring. When the terms of a polynomial have a common factor, you can factor the polynomial as we show below. Basically what we do is this. We find the greatest common factor of the two terms, and that basically is what you do when you're trying to, to uh, simplify fractions. You look for a number that is divisible by into both of the numbers, the numerator and denominator, so that you can take them out. Well, in this case, what we're going to do is use the distributive property to kind of rewrite the polynomial as a product of the GCF, and the remaining factors after we've taken that out. And when I say take it out, I mean divide it out. So here's a few examples. So for this first one, 2x squared plus 18. Well, if I look at those two numbers, the number 2 is in both terms. So 2 is going to be my greatest common factor. And then when I take 2 out, I'm going to have two terms left over on the inside. What I want to think about is, what is 2x squared divided by 2? 2x squared divided by 2 would leave me with x squared. And then I would look at the number 18. Well, what is 18 divided by 2? And it would leave me with a positive 9. That would be factoring 2x squared plus 18. It becomes 2 times the product, um, 2 times the grouping x squared plus 9. I can kind of check my work as well by just basically saying, well, if that is the true factor, I should be able to use my distributive property. There's my 2x squared plus 18. That's how I would verify that that is the right answer. That is the factored form. On the second one for letter B. Well, this one I've got a couple things going on. So when I look at both those terms, so first the numbers, I see a 5. Both 15 is divisible by 5 and 10 is divisible by 5. But in this case, I also see y's in both of them. So when I think about how many y's I see in common, they both have 2. So I need to bring out not just the 5, but a y squared as well. So when I think about 15y cubed divided by 5 y's, the 15 divided by 5 is 3. y cubed divided by y squared is y. When I look at the 10y squareds, and I divide it by 5y squareds, the 10 and the 5 give me a 2. y squared divided by y squared gives me 1. So this would be my factor uh, form of that same, um, <clears throat> um, of that polynomial. And again, I can use my uh, distributive property to say 5y squared times 3y would be 15y cubed and then back on the outside times 2 is my 10y squared. So that just helps me verify that that would be the factored pair of 5y to the third plus 10y squared. So now we want to solve an equation by factoring. To solve an equation by factoring, we want to use the zero product property we talked about in the last uh, section. So to do that, what we do is we have to get all the terms on the same side or onto one side of the equation. So sometimes I'm going to have them on multiple sides and I just have to rearrange all the terms to one side so that the opposite side is equal to zero and then I can look at factoring. So here's an example. 4g squared equals negative 6g. Well, we know that I can't just work across the equal sign. I would need to bring with my inverse operations, the 6g's to the other side. So by doing this, remember like terms, I can't add g squareds and g's. Oops, not an x. But now on the right hand side I get 0 because the negative 6g plus 6g is 0. So from this point, the very first thing I want to do before I even try to figure out the rest of this is to say, can I take out a greatest common factor? So looking at these two terms, 
Again, think about numbers that will go into both. So focusing on the coefficients first, I see a 2 in common. Then looking at the variables, they both have g at minimum. There's 1 in each, so g can come out. When the 2g comes out, the first term is still 2g, because 2g times 2g is 4g squared. And on the second one, the g's are going to cancel and leaving me with 3. So from here, I now am going to use what we learned in the last section. This is our factored form, and what I want to do next is use my zero product property to be able to find the answer of what g's will equal. So 2g equals 0, or 2g plus 3 equals 0. Either of those expressions are true, and the entire equation will work. So we would just follow our one step for the first one. So g's are 0. Second one has two steps to take care of. When I divide by 2, I get g equals negative 3 halves. So my two solutions for this one, and I'm going to come way back up to the top, no, I'm actually not. I'm going to come down to the bottom just because I think it'll look better. G's are 0 or negative 3 halves. Okay, so on the next one. So for the second one, again, I need to get all the terms collected onto the same side or one side of the equation. So I'm going to bring, this time, the negative 18y's over to the right don't have to do that, I'm just doing that so that we end up with um, a positive a in front of the y squared. So it's a 6 instead of a negative 6 y squared. It's not like we can't still do it if I went the other way. I just think that it'll be easier when we try to figure out what's next. So here's where I want to now say I have the 0 on the left hand side. Can I get the right hand side to be factored with a GCF first? Well, 18 and 6 both have a 6 in them. Y's and Y squareds have a Y in them. 6Y squared divided by Y, I'm sorry, 6Y squared divided by 6Y is Y. 18Y divided by 6Y is 3. And remember, it's negative 18Y, so it's a negative 3. So here's our factored form of that polynomial equation. So again, with my zero product property, 6y equals 0, and y minus 3 equals 0. And then I would solve. Divide by 6, y is 0, add 3, y equals 3. So in this situation, 0 and 3 are both solutions to that equation. Here we have another real-life application. Uh, we have a female athlete who is trying to test her vertical leap. Basically, how high can she jump from two feet, standing two feet straight up in the air? Um, we're trying to look at her height in t seconds. We're given the function uh, y equals negative 16 t squared plus 12 t. Now we're going to talk more about this kind of a model down the road, um, just so you can start hearing it and start thinking about it. This negative 16 t squared is kind of the gravity effect that we have on the Earth. So everything we throw up in the air is going to eventually come back down, and that's what's showing us that. This 12 t, the 12 in front of the t is representing an upward velocity. That is telling us how hard she is pushing up and how fast she is going up in the air um, from that point. The number you don't see here, which would be a plus 0, that plus zero is basically where is she starting. So in this case, with it being a zero, she's starting at the ground and doing a jump straight up in the air. Now we'll be learning about some of these graphs and what this graph would look like as she was jumping. And if you just think about it, yes, she's going to jump straight up in the air. But as time goes forward, as her height goes forward with time, she would be doing something. This is my height and wise. She would leave the ground 
get to some peak and then come back down. But right now we're not dealing with that. We're trying to talk about how to factor this to find out how many seconds is she in the air. So remember, when she's on the ground and starts the leap or the jump, she's in the air on the time, and then when she hits the ground again, that's when she's going to be at zero. So what we want to do is take this equation, and again, they gave this to us, so we didn't have to really do anything with it. And what we want to say is, well, we want to know the time, so t is our time, when she's in the air. So what we want to know is, when is she on the ground? And what times does that happen? So we're going to plug in when y is a 0, because that's when she's on the ground, or her height is a 0. So what we want to do now is solve. And the very first thing you want to do to solve these is to look for the greatest common factor. That's almost always going to be the first thing that we do. So looking at these, there's a couple of different things that I can see. So 16s and 12s. 16 and 12 both have 4s. So 4 is definitely going to come out. It's up to you whether you want to take out negative 4 or positive 4. That you don't really have to take out one or the other. I think as you go forward, we're probably going to get in the habit of taking out negative 4. And then the t's, they both have one t, and that's all. The other one has two, but they both don't have two. So when I open my parentheses here, negative 16t squared divided by negative 4t is going to give me 4t. 12t divided by negative 4t is negative 3. So just make sure you're careful on that. Remember, you can always use your distributive property and check this. Negative 4t plus times 4t is 16t squared. Negative 4t times negative 3 is your 12t. So at this point, this is where we can use our zero product property. I get negative 4t equals 0. And I get 4t minus 3 equals 0. Again, I would divide by negative 4 to isolate the t t equals 0, which makes sense because when we start the jump, that's when the clock starts. And I come over here and I say plus 3, 4t equals 3, divide by 4, t equals 3 fourths. So again, we want to answer the question. The question is, how many seconds is she in the air? Well, looking at that as the question versus what we are given, basically what we are told is that she's going to leave the ground at zero, which means she starts her jump, and at three quarters of a second she'll be landing again, so um, she is in the air for three quarters seconds. Now, just like the fireplace in the last one, we can actually determine the maximum height that she's going to reach based on this model that's been given to us. We're going to talk about that in a future chapter, um, but it is one of the things that we're going to start building towards and trying to understand um, how we can use these different models called quadratics to help us figure out that information.